I guess projects come to you guys, but how like like how do you guys come up with these projects? Is this something that you just kind of you know sleep on it, come up with a dream, design this project, and put it on the next day, or is it something that's kind of uh, no? Or does somebody yeah. hire you or the the way that Karen and I have come up with the projects, and I I guess I'd like to say that uh, I'm kind of the break ice person. Is first off, we try to hit, and it's been a problem with COVID, hit as many home shows. Uh, farm shows, uh, farm papers, uh, and the reason I keep going toward farm is two reasons. One, of course, I'm farm oriented, but the other one is the um, uh, Lake Erie watershed, as everybody knows, has serious problems. So there's lots of projects that are being done in agriculture related there. Mm -hmm. And it's also easier to read about, uh, find information on projects that are non-agricultural from there. Now, some of them don't work for us because they're too expensive. The government doesn't uh, fund us like they do down in, in that area. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it gives us some ideas. And, you know, you've got to take the small project and put it downsize it to suit us and try it. And if it works, uh, then away you go. And that, you know, was an example of the tree planting. Another one that we did was uh, controlled tile drainage. And, uh, you know, buffer zones, uh, I, when we first started on, there was uh, basically nobody talked about buffer zones mm -hmm. along the watershed. And I haven't done a total lately, but I know we're, we're over, uh, for most people that wouldn't understand acres, we're over uh, probably one or two farms worth of water uh, buffers that are being done now. And that's at the expense of the farmer, but it's not really an expense, it's just and the same with the cottage owner, it's a different way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So if you can do one little thing on your own that doesn't cost you any money, but you just uh, change your habits, mm -hmm. it can change the habitat. So for an example, on the farm water, on um, the buffers, what we're asking is the guys stay back from the water uh, a set number of feet, you know, hopefully more than a hundred feet and they can still harvest the hay off it and uh, they, but they don't till it to try and keep all the nutrients from going into the water. Well, now they're finding out that that's far more beneficial than just tree or uh, shrub planting, mm -hmm. because when you harvest the hay, you actually take nutrients. So the next crop growing takes more nutrients. So it's like a vegetative buffer, but uh, that's being used as a sponge. You know, the cottage owner can learn from it uh, rather than maybe be worried about his nice green lawn clipped right to the, to the water and fertilizing it, going to Home Depot or wherever and, and putting on fertilizer, maybe he can forget about that and have the flower garden or, or whatever and, and back right. off on the fertilizer. Um, you know, not too many years ago, cottage owners were upset uh, because they'd have to go to uh, Canadian Tire Home Hardware and they would buy Roundup, for an example. Mm -hmm. And it was a watered down version, so it didn't work so well. So they would approach a lot of the agricultural people to try and get a better product but you don't need to be doing that. All right. We also work with a really great group of people and they bring us ideas that they might've seen somewhere or heard. Mm -hmm. We also have groups like Watersheds Canada and Algonquin College that may see something and come to us and say, hey, this might work in your area. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of ways to get ideas. And we have had people that have called and said they saw this or heard of that. 